last week we were looking at that second bit of uh, being a royal priesthood. We had looked at what it means to be kings, and we had looked at what our roles are as kings on the earth. What it actually means when the Lord says, we will, he has made us priests and priests of our God, and we will reign on the earth. What, it, what that means, we have looked at it. And uh, the Lord will, will have us look at the second aspect, as we said last week, which is being priests. What does it mean to be priests? Because whatever God calls us comes with a responsibility. Do you remember we said that last week? No, whatever God has called us, it's not a title. It's actually a responsibility. And I'm praying that the Lord will help us to appreciate that. If, when God says, you are my son, it's with a responsibility. When God says we are king, it comes with a responsibility. When God says we are priests, it comes with a responsibility. They are not titles. And to be a priest is the entitlement of every one of us redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. And this is what we call the priesthood of all believers, like I said, like we said last week, and we've said it before. And your effectiveness, my effectiveness as priest, depends on our understanding and our commitment to the duties of who God has called us. But that every believer redeemed by the blood of Jesus is a priest is the truth. And that's why I want us to take our roles seriously. As a mother, you are a priest. As a father in the house, you are a priest. As a son, as a daughter, you are a priest. When we know that, then we will then look at the responsibilities. Last week, we picked one of the responsibilities, which we don't go too far into. I will just sum that up this morning so that we can link it with another one. We said really broadly, we can divide our responsibilities into four categories as priests. The first one is ministering unto the Lord. Ministering unto the Lord. It's a primary thing. If we fail in that, we will fail in all the other aspects. Our first duty as priests, just like we read last week from Exodus 28 from verse 1 to 2, and we read from you know, 1 to 3, and we read Exodus 29 verse 1 last week. So God asks that Aaron and his sons be brought to him so that they can minister to him in the office of priests. They are to be consecrated to him so that they can minister to him. The first duty, first duty of every priest is to minister to the Lord. And we we're looking at what that meant last week. I won't be able to go into it this week because we want to proceed. But we we'll just take it from where we are. And we said our responsibilities as priests start with our approach at how we approach the Lord. Do we even know how to approach the presence of the Lord as priests? Approach matters. Whether our offering will be accepted or not depends on our approach. From Psalm 100 last week, it said, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come, come before his presence with singing. Singing, singing, singing is one of the ways we enter into the presence of God. When we say let us worship, whether in the private, in your own private, in your, in your own closet, or in as we gather together corporately, we are actually not waiting for somebody. The meeting has started. We are already entering into his presence. I didn't go. So worship is not for us uh, a time we just pass so that uh, others can join us. No, we worship as part of our entrance, appropriate entrance as priests into the presence of God. And then we looked last week also at what that means 
He said, know that the Lord he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Our approach must come from the knowledge of him. Our approach must come from re revelation of God, of who he is to us and who we are before him. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Are we getting it? Amen. So if we are following it, so that is what it is. As we sink and we enter into the process, one of the things we need to do is that Lord help us to catch a good a revelation of you. Approach God with, from a level of, of knowledge, of understanding of who he is to you. You cannot worship God. You cannot minister to God beyond your knowledge of him. It is impossible. And then it goes on to say, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, which is what God has been helping us to do. And thank you for Friday, as I came back and I met the, because I came late and I met what you are doing, the prayer, the th if there was a word I kept on hearing is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank, and thank God for Sister Flavia uh, for the song. She rounded up with not knowing what was on my heart. She rounded up with a beautiful song, you know, which just a, sing, a simple song, but beautiful. Amen. What was that song again? We are saying, we are thank, saying thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. We are saying thank you, Jesus. And that was beautiful. Because that's the way God wants us to approach him. And you saw, you know, I saw the way the, the, the Spirit of God fired us up to pray. And I, and I, and I thank God for that. And I'm praying that we will do even more of that in Jesus' name. Because it shows that we are learning the correct approach into the presence of God. And look at the next thing. It says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. The virtues of God that you know. Hallelujah. And we must know how to extol the virtues of God. His goodness, his greatness, his mightiness, his power, his loving kindness, his forgiveness. We must know how to extol that when we come into his presence. That's the way to approach God as priests. No matter what pressure we are having, no matter what pressure we are going through, the right approach is not to approach God with a sense of, of entitlement. No. First of all, approach him with thanksgiving. Recognize what he has done. Yes, we, are, we, have, we have privileges, we have rights in his presence, but we must approach it carefully with humility and we must come the right way. And then we said last week, said yes, be thankful to him and bless his name. Speak well of him. That's what it means. Speak well of God. Be thankful. And all of us must learn it. And that's why the scripture says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. That is the will of God. In everything, good, bad in our own sight, give thanks to him. The one who is capable, what I've told myself is this, the one who has said, if we make all things to work together for my good, let me approach him with thanksgiving. Lord, thank you. Because whatever I'm going through, you are able to make it to work together for my good. And he has never failed to do that. Never. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Do we, do we get this point we have made this morning? I'm just summarizing last week for us, just to carry us into today. Ministry unto the Lord starts from there. It starts from our approach. It starts from our attitude, attitude of our hearts towards the Lord. I'm not just talking about a ritual of saying, thank you, Lord. They say, we should thank you when we come to your presence. What can I do? <laughs> I better thank you. No, no, it's not like that. Lord, I thank you from my heart. Even when you don't feel like, I thank you from my heart. 
Because the situation I'm in will work together for good. Because that's what your word says. You are great, you are mighty. You are the one who commanded light to shine in darkness. You created the whole world. So there's nothing about me that you cannot turn around. You, you can see that when an approach comes like that, you can know, you, you definitely know that God will do great things. Yeah. Are, we, are we beginning to understand correct approach to the presence of God? Yes, sir. So ministry to the Lord starts from there. It starts from there. And then what else does it entail to minister to the Lord? But let me quickly say this. Turn with me quickly to Psalm 29. Let's take Psalm 29. I think that will be fine. Psalm 29, verse 1 and 2, and Psalm 33. Just to round up that, and I will say other things that it entails to minister to the Lord. And you will see that it is not just in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. So ministering to the Lord was the first one. I will take the second one today as well. Uh, so in Psalm 29, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord all heavenly things. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory doing to his name. Watch Amen. the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord glory and honor, glory and, and, uh, and honor, or what is called strength there. Uh, you know, give unto the Lord the glory due him. That's the word I'm looking for. The glory due him. There is a glory that is due to the Lord. When we approach the Lord, otherwise we are denying him what is due to him. Are you following me? That yes, is sir. due. He deserves it. He qualifies to have the glory, to receive thanks from us. So it's about giving to the Lord this due. And praise is his due. Thanks is his due. Hallelujah. Worship is his due. Because he's our maker. We didn't make ourselves. That's what Psalm 100 says. And we are the sheep of his pasture. Without him, we will have no provision. Because he's our shepherd. Hallelujah. So we are talking about giving God what is due to him. And praise is comely of our God. That's what... I guess that's what Psalm 33 says. Um, okay. Someone to read Psalm, verse, Psalm 33, for, 33 for me, verses 1 and 2. No, 1 to 3. Is anybody reading it at all? I'll read. Verse 1 to 3 of Yes, please. Rejoice in the Lord. O oh, you righteous. Yes. For praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise from the upright. Praise from the upright, from the righteous, is beautiful. The other translation we say is comely. It's fitting for God. Hallelujah. It's beautiful for us and it's beautiful in the sight of God. Mm. And God wants it. God wants to have it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, go on, my sister. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Amen. 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 Read verse 4 because it tells us why we have to do that. Okay. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works... Are done in truth. Can you see that? Amen. There's always a reason for us to thank God. May the Lord continue to help to give us a reason to thank the Lord. One of the songs we, we've learned, we sing, we, 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 we've been singing it for years, is I have a reason to praise the Lord. I have a reason to praise the Lord. In my heart, I have a reason to praise the Lord. 
I have a reason to praise the Lord. In my heart, I have a reason to praise the Lord. I have a reason to praise the Lord. In my heart, I have a reason to praise the Lord. I have a reason to praise the Lord. If we can look inward, we will always have a reason to praise the Lord. Men who praise the Lord, they have find a reason to praise Him. Hallelujah. Find a reason to praise God. Find a reason to give thanks to God. Even when you think nothing is working, find one reason why you can still thank God in the midst of it. That's how to develop an attitude of gratitude, thanksgiving, and praise unto the Lord. Does that make sense to us? And do it. Get a time. It's not just when we come to, to the church meeting that we get tambourine. Get tambourine in your own house and play tam- and just and just use it. If that is the only instrument you have, use it. And somebody has already said, when God says 10 string, even if I don't know how to play guitar, I have 10 fingers jamming them together like this. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Hallelujah. We Amen. have the instrument to praise God. Our mouth, our hands, everything we have. And we do it skillfully. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. This was everywhere last week, just to carry all of us along. So how else do we minister to the Lord? And I'll link it to one or two scriptures in the New Testament, and then we'll go to another point this morning, which I will introduce. If we can't go too far into it, we'll continue next week by the grace of God. So now, um, so what else do we do to minister to the Lord? How else do we minister to him? Let's turn to, um, let's go to the New Testament. I think Luke 8 will help us. Let's go to the New Testament, Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, I'll come back to Mark 14 shortly. In Luke 8, I'm sure I've taught on this before. I remember years back when I was teaching on this, about the ministry, the importance of women, their ministries in the church. And, but this applies to all of us. And you may not recognize them as priests, but they were doing priestly ministry, even unto the Lord Jesus. From verse 1. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing glad tidings of the kingdom, of the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom he had driven out seven demons. Hallelujah. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others who, the old King James says, who ministered to him. This one says, provided for him with their substance. If we are reading Old King James, the Old King James says, who ministered to him, the original KJV, who ministered to him with their substance. They just served God with whatever they had. Ministering to the Lord is about serving God, bringing whatever you have to the Lord for his use. It's not the way we minister to the Lord. Say, Lord, here is what I have. It may be your substance, it may be your, your money, it may be anything, but we minister to the Lord with what we have. And the most important thing you have is your own life. That's the most important thing. They minister to him. They served him with what they have. Brothers and sisters, several people will say, I don't have anything. Ah, that's actually a very bad confession because it says those who don't have from them, what they even have will be taken from them, which means having is a mentality. Some people have a sense of not having when they actually have what to serve God with. We minister to the Lord with our substance. We minister to the Lord with our lives. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And I'm praying that the Lord will help us to understand this truth in Jesus' name. We minister to the Lord with our substance. Minister to the Lord with your substance. And that substance can be anything about you. Anything you have. Anything God has blessed you with. Did God bless you with a good voice? Use it for the Lord. That's ministering to him. Did God bless you with skill to do, to play instrument? Use it for God. Whatever you have. He said they minister to the Lord with their substance. With their substance. The other time I was teaching the women about women of substance. All of you, all of us, you, me, we have a substance to minister to the Lord. We have something. That's our first offering to the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to run now. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I just want us to understand what it means to minister to the Lord. Identify something about you with which God can be blessed, with which God can be glorified, and use it for him, for him. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let's, let somebody read. If you are there, you can read. In Romans 12, verse 1, the scripture has this to say. Are you there? If anybody is there, read it. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and appropriate worship. Can you see that? Our true and appropriate worship is to first of all lay ourselves down before him. Every priest that we will talk about consecration another time. When we, uh, when we talk about how to make our priestly ministry effective, we'll talk about that. But the thing we are talking about is, is that the offering of our own life to him, the Bible says, is our true and appropriate worship. Every other translation of the reasonable service. Reasonable service. Any other thing is unreasonable. Until we have, first of all, put our lives into his hands. As we come to him, can we lay our life down and say, Lord, here am I? That is everything about us. Whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. That's ministering to the Lord. Laying our life at his altar. Every day, say, Lord, I offer myself. I give myself to you. A living, a living sacrifice. I want, all of my life is yours. I hold nothing back from you today. I hold nothing back from you. That is how to minister to the Lord. Laying our life at the altar is what it means. The priest in the Old Testament will offer bulls and goats. But we are to lay our own before him. No priest can go beyond that. You can't go, you can't do anything more until your life is laid before him. May the Lord help us to understand this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we getting this truth? Are we picking this? Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So let's look at other ways in which people minister to the Lord. So we have said our substance, our own life, which includes our own very life. Let's look at other ways in which people minister to the Lord. They just minister to the Lord. Let's look at Acts chapter 13. In Acts 13, verse 1 and 2. In Acts 13, the scripture says now, I'm reading verse 1, Acts 13 from verse 1. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manahem, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. 
as they ministered to the Lord, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Can you see that? I want you to understand what that place is saying. These were great men and women gathered together in the presence of the Lord. The first thing the Bible said, was that they were not making requests. They were not even saying, God, do this. They said they ministered to the Lord. They just offered praise. Just like you have said, they just offered, I'm sure they must have been just worshiping or been lost in worship. As they ministered to the Lord, brothers and sisters, when we let them minister appropriately to the Lord, we will hear the voice of God. We will hear the voice of God. Have you not noticed that when, whenever worship is great in the presence of God, he speaks? Then you see, you see prophecies. You see the word of knowledge, word of wisdom coming. That must tell us something. Did we not remember Elisha, the great prophet? There was a time he didn't have a clue about what the word of God was to the kings who came to him. Jehoshaphat and, uh, and uh, what's the name of the other king? Now, as they came to him, he didn't have a clue. Then suddenly, he said, bring me the minstrel. Let somebody come and play the music. The minstrel is the musician. And as they worship, the Bible said the word of the Lord came to him. Are you following me? That tells you that our first assignment is not even to serve people. It's not to give prophecy to people. It's to minister to the Lord. And here you can see this place. God did not speak about separating Paul and Barnabas until they ministered to him. They ministered to him. And one of the ways we minister to the Lord is in fasting. Several of us don't know what it means to fast. Fasting. We don't know what it means to fast except we are looking for something. Except when we need something, I'm going to declare a fast. But that's actually not the way to fast. The way to fast is sometimes, many times, I fast not because I'm going to, I'm asking God for something particularly when I, in my mind. I just sense that, let me just minister, let me just separate time just to be in the presence of God and just to bless Him. Then every any other assignment comes. Fasting is one of the ways we minister to the Lord because it helps us to separate our life unto Him, to separate our time to Him over and above our natural desires. That's the way God values it. Sometimes you wonder what does God need our fasting for? Oh, it's one of the ways we minister to Him, as we can see here. They minister to the Lord. Someone's microphone is actually. Uh, echo into us. If you can mute your microphone, except when you want to talk, that will be great. Great. Amen. Amen. So that is what it is. So they fasted. They engaged in fasting just to bless the name of the Lord. They were not looking for anything. They were not asking for anything. Then God said, separate this one to the work to which I've called them. Every work must proceed from the place of ministering to the Lord. Every other assignment must proceed from there. A man who does not know how to minister to the Lord have no ministry to anyone else. I know we are in the days of puppets ministry. We are in the days where everybody wants to be preachers and only very few people have an altar where they minister to the Lord. where they just minister to the Lord. Can we declare a fast as a church? Not because we want to ask for anything. We just want to bless, we just want to separate that to just bless the Lord. Are we getting something here? So we minister to him, even in fasting, just waiting in his presence. Say, Lord, here am I. I just bless you today. I just want to have time in your presence. And God sees it as a great sacrifice. Because you have sacrificed food, you have sacrificed pleasure, you just say, I want to just bless him. 
Don't let us run to the Lord in fasting. Some people say, I'll just declare three-day fast because they have a need. No, that's a wrong approach. We are using God that way. Can we see proper approach into the presence of God? Christianity must be different from the way we are practicing it now to make sense. Hallelujah. Did we get it? Did we get that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The voice of God will come to us. We will see the move of the Holy Spirit when we learn to minister, minister to the Lord. His voice will be everywhere for us to hear. Who and that is what God wants to bring all, wants to bring all of us into. We just minister to the Lord. Let's go back to that Psalm 29, and I'll show you something that followed that, just to buttress what we are saying here. Psalm 29 again, where we read before. In Psalm 29, if you go back there, it says, oh, sorry, that's Proverbs. It says something there, which I want you to take note of. It says, Psalm 29, after verses one and two, which we've read, which I don't want to go back into saying, give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and honor or strength, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Look at verse three, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And read on all about the voice of the Lord. But how did this start? As you give unto God, the honor due him, the glory due him. Why several of us can't hear the voice of the Lord? It's because we are not giving him the honor that is due him. Give him the honor due him. And things you are thinking you don't have ideas about, they will begin to break forth. The voice of the Lord will begin to thunder mightily. Hallelujah. Look at Jehoshaphat's army. I hope you know that they only went to the Lord, and when God has said they will fight their battle, they sang to him. And as they were, the Bible says, as they were singing praises unto the Lord, God was fighting their battle, making their enemies to turn against themselves. They were not talking about the enemy anymore. They were just ministering to the Lord. What a beautiful way to have victory. You will say that is the Old Testament. It's not just the Old Testament. Chains have been broken. Wise people were ministering to the Lord. Paul knew how to do it. You remember? Let's go to Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. And I'm praying that this will become part of what It's not just a gimmick. It is the reality of what God wants from us. When we don't know what God wants from us, we cannot satisfy him. Men who moved nations, men who shook lands, they were men and women who understood this truth. Look at what, what happened to Paul. They had just been beaten. I hope you understand. They had just been beaten. They were put in chain. They were put in jail. But look at what, what happened. They knew how to minister to the Lord. They knew their role as priests. Look at what, this, what the Bible said. Does somebody want to read for me? That should be verse uh, 25. Does somebody want to read verse 25 to me? 25 and 26. Just to involve, involve you in the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. About midnight, Paul and silence were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to him to death. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaking. At once, all the prison doors be opened, and everyone's chains came loose. Amen. Amen. Can you see that? They were singing hymns to the Lord. They were pressing and singing hymns to the Lord. Boy, see how, what happened? They, they, they got, got thundered from heaven and chains were broken. 
They were released from their chain. Chain fell off just because they were ministering to the Lord in the middle of the night, at midnight. They just ministered to the Lord and something happened. They denied themselves of sleep. They, could, they were not complaining. They were just praising the Lord and singing to him. And suddenly something happened. May we know how to minister to the Lord appropriately in Jesus' name. Amen. And But do you know that ministry opened to them, to the jailer? From there, they were able to reach out to somebody. Mm. Oh, may the Lord help us to understand this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. And as a priest of God, Let's also learn how to offer. I'm not saying, I'm not in that group of people that says every midnight you must, no, 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 no I'm not in that group. You know, you know me, I don't belong to, those, to that group. But there are times when you can wake up in the night, in the quiet of the night, and just say, I have time now. I didn't have time all day. Let me just worship the Lord. Or the Holy Spirit wakes you up to do it. Just do it unto the Lord. And God will appreciate it. I'm not talking about a ritual. I'm talking about a lifestyle. Where, whether it is in the night, in the morning, in the evening, your praise can rise up to God as you release yourself to him. That's how to minister to the Lord. Nobody is seeing you. Nobody is looking at you, but you are ministering to the Lord. May we be true ministers unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone wants to be called a minister. I'm a minister, I'm a minister. You know, what, the word ministry is first starts from knowing how to minister to the Lord. Psalm 134. Psalm 134. Psalm 134. If we can go into the next phrase I want us to go into, no problem. We'll stop there and continue from there next week. But let's just look at what does this ministry to the Lord mean? Look at what the challenge for the ministers of our God. Um, can somebody raise 134 for us? We have just three verses there, 134. And then somebody else, another person to read uh, Psalm 135, verses 1 to 4, they speak about the same thing. And we can, you can even finish that Psalm 135 on your own. But we don't want to do that this morning because of our time. But let somebody just read that Psalm 134, verses 1 to 3, quickly. And another person to prepare to read Psalm 135, verses 1 to 4. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, you servants of the Lord. You who serve at night in the house of the Lord, lift your hand towards the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. Can you say that? That's how to command blessing. He said, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants or ministers. The word servant there is the same thing as ministers of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God. Lift up your hand. So when we say let's lift up our hand, it's part of the things. It's part of the things God commands us to. It's part of the ways we minister to the Lord. Lifting our hand, God wants it to see. Lift up holy hands. Even Paul commanded it in the New Testament. May the Lord give us understanding of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You lift up your hand. You are opening up yourself. You, are, you know, it, it shows how exuberant you are in your spirit. Lift up your hand and just bless them. That's the way God wants us to do it. And it will liberate us from the rituals of praise and worship. When we're okay, let's just do it. No, 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 no. You are doing something that the Lord wants. And when you know you are doing something the Lord delights in, the Lord wants, will you not commit yourself to it? That is ministry to the Lord. Say, who stand by night? Which means there are times to do this in the night. Both night and day belongs to the Lord. If you can't do it during the day because you are busy, do it in the night. Hallelujah. 
But the most important is to learn to minister to the Lord. Minister to him. And look, I said, and may the Lord, and bless him in his sanctuary. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you. God responds when we minister to him. God pour, pours out blessing when we let him appropriately. Amen. Amen. I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit will teach us this and it will not become a ritual. I'm not teaching you a ritual. I'm talking about what God wants us to do in his presence. Psalm 135 is for somebody else. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, all you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the court of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to, the na- to his name. For it is for it is pleasant, it is beautiful, it is wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Lord has chosen Jacob. God has chosen you. That's why we are chosen people. For himself. Israel for a special treasure. Just what it means to be a chosen people. That's what he's saying. You whom God has chosen and has called to come to his presence, just as we saw last week, said, do it. Minister to him. Lift up your hand and bless him. Amen. 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 Do we understand this? And as we are beginning to close, I thought I can go into something else. But do you know that this is something we cannot afford not to learn how to do? Because it's not just a ministry for here alone. It's a ministry for eternity. Ministering to the Lord is a ministry for eternity. Turn with me quickly to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. I'm, pray, I'm just praying in my heart that this will become part and parcel of our lives in Jesus' name. Yes. That's all I'm just praying for this morning. That God let this be part and parcel of our lives. I have so many places in Revelation to read, but because of our time, I'm just going to pick this and then conclude somewhere where we want to pray, where we will pray this morning. After these things, I'm reading from verse 9. After these things, I look. And behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white uh, robes, hallelujah, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and mind be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders Answer saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their, their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. So knowing how to minister to the Lord commands his presence amongst us. Mm-hmm. Even, from, even from on the earth. Mm-hmm. And this is what we are going to continue for eternity. This spans till the end of Revelation. I can pick many, many scriptures for you there. But I'm go- not going there this morning. 
So they just learn how to wave their hand. They, they know, they held the palm tree, they wave it in their hand. Can you see this idea of waving? May God help us to understand this truth Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. They were just appreciating the salvation of God. If you have nothing to appreciate God for, appreciate him for your salvation. Appreciate him for the blood that he shed for you. Say salvation to our God who sit upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. All of us can sing that song because the blood of the Lamb has redeemed us. It's something to be grateful God, to God for for all eternity. He said day and night. And then I said, no, it's not, there's no this thing about it. If you can't do it in the day, do it in the night. Let's learn day. Let it become our lifestyle. Ministering to the Lord. Ministering to the Lord. Singing praises to him. Find a new song. He said, they sang as it were a new song. And that place we read before, said they sing unto the Lord a new song. Find something to sing to the Lord. Frog Chronicles 16. I'm now going to pick verses one, just the first uh, three verses. It says, so they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. And you know the ark of God in those days represent the presence of God. I hope you know that. So when they brought it, they brought it into the tabernacle which David erected for it. And don't forget that this was mentioned again in the New Testament. How the Lord will rebuild again the tabernacle of David. This is what he's talking about. So he says, and erected for it. Then they offered burnt offering and peace offering before God. That's ministering to the Lord. Look at what happened. And when David had finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he distributed to everyone of Israel, both man and woman, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisin. Then he appointed the sons of Asaph and others to minister to the Lord continually. And then the song of priests he sang, we saw that. You, and you can finish that whole chapter on your own. But the point I want us to round up with this morning, as we close here, is this. When in the presence of God, David himself ministered to the Lord. And that is why David was a special king. He knew proper approach to God. And he was such a special king that he was a type of Christ. He was a priest. Can you see that he was a priestly role that he was playing here? He was into a priestly role. He was a priest, he was a prophet, he was a king. And that's who God has made us to be. So, and that's why the tabernacle of David has to be erected again, where every one of us can fulfill the three roles, a king, a priest, and a prophet. That's what God is calling all nations to. Everyone saved by the blood of Jesus can fulfill this role, which David fulfilled. We can be kings, we can be priests, and we can be prophets. You remember that King Uzziah, as wonderful as he was, attempted to do this. He was struck down because he didn't know proper approach. The leprosy, leprosy was, you know, struck him. But as for David, he knew proper approach to God. He ministered to the Lord. This is the next one I will have said. And then the Bible says, and he blessed, after he had done that, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Our next role, which we will take next week by the grace of God, is ministering to the people. Can you see that? From the presence of God, he came out to minister to the people. He blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Next week, by the grace of God, we'll be looking at ministering to people. Ministering to the people in the name of the Lord. When we have learned the act of ministering to God, we must also learn the act of ministering to the people in the name of the Lord.